In this question, we have to find the equation of the tangent line to this curve at the point 3, 1. Well, let's start first by getting a visual picture. Using Desmos, we can see what the curve looks like. It looks like an 8 on its side, or the infinity sign. And this is an example of what's called a lemniscate curve, which is kind of cool. We can also see that 3, 1 is on the curve. And so a tangent line there might look something like this. And that means that the slope of that tangent line is going to be a negative. Now to find the equation of any line, be it a tangent line or otherwise, we need two things. For example, we're going to need the slope and we might need a point on the curve. Well, we have a point on the curve, it's 3, 1, but how do we find the slope? Well, if we remember our definition of the derivative, it is the slope of the tangent line at any point on a curve. So what we need to do is find the derivative of this equation, and because it's a relation, it's not a function, we're going to use implicit differentiation. Okay, so starting on the left side, we can use the power rule. 2 times 2 would be 4. x squared plus y squared. Take away 1 from the 2, which would give us uh, to the exponent 1. And of course, we'll have to use uh, chain rule. So we have to take the derivative with respect to x then of x squared plus y squared. Okay, looking at the right side, we can do the same thing. So first off, I'm going to put a 1 there for exponent, and then we can use the power rule again. 1 times 25 is 25. This would be x squared minus y squared. Take away 1, which would be to the exponent 0, times the derivative with respect to x of x squared minus y squared. Chain rule. So we'll get 4 x squared plus y squared. The derivative of this would be 2x plus 2y, and of course we're using implicit, so this would be times dy dx. And on the right side, of course, this part to the 0 would be 1, so 1 times 25 would be 25, and then implicit differentiation here, we'd get 2x minus 2y times dy dx. Next we have to isolate the dy dx's, get them on one side. So I'm going to have to expand. So let's start here. I'll, I'll move the 4 into this bracket. And so this would give us 4x squared plus 4y squared times all of this. And then on the right, I'll put the 25 and move it inside by multiplying everything by 25. And that would give us 50x minus 50y dy dx. OK, I'll get rid of these here so we get more space. Next, we'll expand out the left. So multiplying the 4x squared by everything inside the brackets and the 4y squared by everything inside here. So this would give us 8x cubed plus 8x squared y dy dx plus 8xy squared plus 8y cubed dy dx. And that would all be equal to the 50x minus 50y dy dx. Next, let's isolate the dy dx terms. This one here, this one here, and this one here. We'll put those on the left side and move everything else onto the right side. So on the left, we'd have 8x squared y dy dx plus 8y cubed dy dx. And if I bring that negative 50y over, it'll become positive. 50y dy dx, that's the left side. And on the right side, we still have the 50x. Moving over the 8x cubed, we would get minus 8x cubed. And moving over the 8xy squared, we'd get minus 
x, y squared. Okay, let's simplify a little bit. We notice that all these terms are divisible by 2, so let's take out a 2. So we're going to divide everything by 2, every term. So this would give us 4x squared y dy dx plus 4y cubed dy dx plus 25y dy dx, and we'll continue on the right side. And there you go. So next we're going to isolate the dy dx part, so we'll factor, factor that out and see what we get. I'm going to move this up so we have a little bit more space to work with here. And we would get, if we factor out the dy dx, we would get 4x squared y plus 4y cubed plus 25y. And on the right side, we'd still have the 25x minus 4x cubed minus 4xy squared. Then we're going to divide both sides by this term here. So dy dx would equal 25x minus 4x cubed minus 4xy squared, all divided by 4x squared y plus 4y cubed plus 25y. So this is our derivative and represents the value of the slope of the tangent line at any point on the curve. So at the point 3, 1, the 3 is the x value and the 1 is the y value. So we can just substitute these values for x and y into our um, equation here to find the slope. So dy dx, or in our case we're looking for the slope m, would equal 25 times 3 minus 4 times 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 times 1 squared, all divided by 4 times 3 squared times 1 plus 4 times 1 cubed plus 25 times 1. So this would give us 75 minus 108. We'd have to take the 3 cubed as 27 times 4, 108, um, minus 12, all divided by 36 plus 4 plus 25. And we work that out. It gives us negative 45 over 65. And if we divide the top and the bottom by 5, it ends up being negative 9 thirteenths. So that's the value for our slope. And we also have our point. And of course, remember, we need a slope and a point to find the equation of the tangent line. So to finish off, we know that m is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. So this would be negative 9 thirteenths is equal to y minus 1 over x minus 3. Cross multiplying, we'd end up with negative 9x plus 27 equals 13y minus 13. Isolating the y, we're going to bring the negative 13 over. We'd get negative 9x plus 40 equals 13y. Then dividing everything by 13, we get negative 9 thirteenths x plus 40 over 13 equals y. And there you go. There's our equation of our tangent line at the point 3, 1. So let's take a look at the curve again. All right, moving over, let's take a look at the curve. Here it is. So we can see that here's the tangent line right here, and it's given by this equation. And it makes sense. It uh, touches at that point at 3, 1. And so it looks like we've got ourselves uh, the right answer. There you go.